So let's talk about wedding quilts. So this is a quilt that I have finished. I'm very excited to be giving it to my son and his um, bride-to-be when they get married. And um, I actually got the quilt done a couple months before the wedding, which is sometimes unusual. Uh, this is what I chose. These are large stripes of fabrics. They come when I buy, unfortunately, I buy the, or fortunately, I buy it by the bolt because I can, because then I just sell the rest of, at um, the different shows uh, that I go to or on my website, The Quilted Turtle. But I chose three different colors. I had, I was going to do more, but I found out that this was enough. So I have the navy stripe. I have white, just a simple white, and then I have, what you see here is an ombre. Now, let me see if I can show you the top. Okay, so this is a king size quilt, it's huge. So that top stripe is a navy, but it is also part of the ombre. So I really only needed to have three fabrics. And so let me show you, so of course we have the stripe, um, and I don't usually do a lot with stripe, but it just was called for for this. And I think it looks really nice. It gives there an, an, another element to the quilt, just to liven it up a little bit. The um, other fabric that I chose is an ombre. Now let me show you. I was able to use this. So if I, if I take the, the bolt, this is how you're gonna see it at the store. You're gonna see it like this. And I just cut a strip off like this this is what I got when I cut a strip off so I could show you. So you see all the different colorways in that. I just love this fabric. I love ombres. I don't use them nearly enough. I want to start using more of them. But it was perfect for try it for this. So what I did to get the colors that I wanted, rather than cut my stripe this way, I chose to use the fabric up and down this way. No, I'm sorry. Not up, not up. Chose to use the fabric in its long piece um, so that I could get that lighter blue as one strip and that darker blue as another strip. Uh, so that way I only had to buy um, two different blues, one ombre uh, fabric. Now the best part of this quilt is that um, I did a big stitch quilt on it. For me, the best part is, because that's what I really love doing, is I love big stitch. So I wanted to do something that had a lot of my handcrafting in it without doing a lot of piecing. And so since I love big stitch, this was a dream. Um, I, I knew right away when I did these large strips, I was just gonna do large running strips. And I'll try to pull that in for you so that you can see that we have um, just long strips of big stitch quilting. But I decided to give it a little more interest, I would use different colors. I really like that. So now let me show you the big stitch quilting. So here it is, you can see it up closer. You can see here is where I have different colors of blue. And I like that variation. Now here in the uh, stripe, I have some white. And I used basically mostly white through this. Sometimes I hit the stripe, sometimes I went onto the white stripe. Mostly I just wanted to get um, some nice texture going. Now, just to give you an idea, there are other ombres you can use for this that would give it an entirely different look. Let me show you this one. So this ombre is beautiful so this would be wonderful for someone who really likes a lot of color big stitch quilting is very very simple so what you're going to need in order to do it is you're going to need um, a needle these are called big stitch needles any needle that has a large eye and a sharp end will do these are really nice and convenient you can uh, I'm going to put my needle in I'm going to rock up. My finger underneath is pushing this up. So my finger is underneath it, pushing it up. I feel it here just so I can see that needle came through. When you first start, you can do one stitch at a time. You can mark this with a pencil and a ruler. As you get going a little, once you have the hang of it, you can put in two or three stitches. Now in my stitches, I'm not real worried about the lengths being the same. 
I know that when I get a lot of stitches in there, it's not going to matter whether they're the same. But if you like to get very, take your time slower and do very even stitches, you may. I like the, I like the very slight, you know, the differences in length because I think it gives it a bit more of a folk, folk art kind of a feel. Okay, right now I'm just working on, I'm going to try to finish this thread quickly for you so I can show you how to end. Right now I'm just working on, oops, a sample piece. I like to take the scraps and do a sample piece if I want to try out different lines, different angles, or just, just, just to kind of get myself back in the swing of things as if, if it's been a while since I've hand quilted, but you can do the same. Um, and it's also great for teaching. When I'm done with the sample piece, if I do it something pretty on it, I can always make coasters out of it, cut it into smaller, and, and or make little bags out of it if I, if I want. Okay, so I'm getting close to the end, so I'm going to show you how I end. So what I'm going to do now is simply this. I'm going to, the last stitch is in, I'm going to place my needle behind this last stitch, and I'm going to go just through the middle layers. I'm not going all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to bring it forward and I'm going to let go. So the tail, I'm going to cut that off. The tail is going to be underneath there. So when I start my next thread, I will stitch right over that. So now let me show you. And then I will then cut the tail on the back. So let me show on the, the beginning. So let me show you. Now when we flip it over, you will see your stitches look roughly the same on either side. Again, my stitches tend to be longer on the back with big stitch, does not matter. Does not matter. Your stitch is your own, so you get to decide how, you, how big or how small or how even you would like them. But this is, for me, one of the best ways to finish a quilt. I absolutely love sitting, watching movies, and doing big stitch quilting. Now this is the back of that quilt. It's a nice, very busy print on the back. This way, if they want, they could use this side as well. Um, the big stitching shows through it much more subtly, um, shows through much more subtle than it does on the front. So like I said, they can change their mind and flip it over and use either side. And then now the last thing I'm gonna show you is that with the scraps that I had of the quilt, I also made pillowcases. So look how pretty these are. These are these are just that very simple pillowcase method um, that you can find videos on on how to do a, like a 15 minute pillowcase. This one's the same as that one. So I have two different styles. I have that style and then I have this style. And this time I used the ombre right in that strip. Isn't that pretty? So you get a little bit of variation there as well and I made four of them. And then I'm gonna let them know that I do have a lot more fabric, so if they want even more than four, uh, they, I certainly can do that for them. So get out there, use your ombres, make some pretty quilts, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, and then I also use a thimble. This is a leather thimble by BOHN Bond. I love these thimbles, my favorites. Any thimble will do, but you do want a thimble. I'm going to simply thread my needle, cut off a piece. I usually cut it the length from my fingertip to my elbow. Stitching. Now all you're going to do is you're gonna start in, I'm gonna show you how to start a thread and how to end one. You're gonna start a thread close to the edge and you're gonna come up just one one length. Now this is big stitching, so these can be big. I'm going to leave a tail of about an inch or more. I'm going to back stitch. So this first stitch I made a little bit longer. I'm going to bring my needle in behind it. Okay, and now I'm going to go forward. I'm going to put on my thimble on my thumb because for me right now I'm going to be working forward. And so all you're going to do is load some stitches and you pull it through. So now you can take a marking pencil and a ruler and you can make a line if you like. 